Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is monthly favorites time, but today we're gonna do things a little bit differently. I'm going to share my February favorites try on style today. So we're gonna put them all on my face together today. I have like four different products on my eyes, like two eyeshadow palettes, a liquid shadow, and that's not even to mention the mascara and the brow products. A lot of new things this month, a couple of old favorites, and even a couple of things that I was this close to decluttering. In fact, one of them I may have decluttered and pulled back out from the declutter pile. I'll explain it all as we try it on together today. Hope you guys are excited about it before we get to the makeup. I wanna wish a special welcome to my new visitors here. Thanks for joining me today. Please consider subscribing before you leave and make sure your notifications are turned on. And with that said, we've got a lot of makeup to put on, so let's get to it. All right, I think I have everything here in front of me. I'm gonna do things a little bit differently today. We're gonna do my eyes first. This is not something I typically do. I think it's been a few years since I have done my eyes before the rest of my face. So I have two palettes that have kind of been favorites for me this month. This one right here from Juvia's Place. This is an old favorite, the Nubian Coral. Such a beautiful palette, you guys. I don't even like these gray tones right here, but everything else inside here creates the most beautiful looks. If you like corally kind of peachy pink tones, this is a really great one. Another one I've kind of come back to is the Tati Beauty palette. I kind of wanted to do this one today in effort to maybe match my fingernails. I am so pathetic, you guys. Until very recently, this thing has had a long break for me. It's been very neglected and kind of forgotten. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit of concealer on my eyelids first. This is not an official favorite. This is just a very light toned concealer. I don't even think they make this concealer anymore. I got it from YesStyle about a year and a half ago. I just wanna pop a little bit of this on because my eyelids and the rest of my face for that matter. Very, very red today. And that we can successfully cover up this little thing right here. I feel like I just had a zit right here. How is it back already? All right, we're gonna jump right in with this shade right here. This is just the light kind of ivory shade. I wanna put just a little bit of this just through the crease and above, just mostly to set down that concealer that I started with. Now let's go to this shade right here. How many of you guys use your Tati palette regularly? For those of you that have this one. Do you guys use it a lot? I imagine I would use mine a lot more if I wasn't always trying out new eyeshadow palettes, which is not a problem I'm complaining about. I really enjoy trying out new eyeshadow palettes, but I know a lot of my palettes that I love get neglected because of that. I'm mostly just gonna use the mattes for this look. I will do something different for a shimmer. I have a liquid shadow that we're gonna use, but I wanna add some of these pinks to my crease area. Let's start out with this one right here. Just a tiny bit of that on the tip of my brush. It looks like there's a ton of product there. This shade is very, very, very strongly pigmented. I wanna go kind of bold today to draw the attention away from this very bad hair day that I'm having. I did not try very hard with my hair today. I came down here and pulled everything out for my makeup to get ready to film with the intention to go back upstairs and like reshape my curls. And then I thought, eh, no, I just did not wanna do that today. So I got lazy and just kind of pulled it back into this little side pony. This is literally the hair that I woke up with today with a ponytail holder in it. Ooh, that is seriously bold. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with a smaller brush. Let's use this small blending brush right here from Sydney Grace. I wanna put this color on the lower lash line. I don't typically like putting bright pinks on my lower lash line. We're gonna add this one down there instead. I likely will still pull a little bit of this pink down here as I'm adding this, which I'm okay with, but I just don't wanna go too pink down here. I feel like it kinda makes me look like I have some sort of cold. Okay, I wanna add just a little bit more depth to that pink with this dark brown right here. It's the Ritual shade. Actually, let's take a smaller, or actually a mid-size blending brush. This one right here, also from Sydney Grace. We're gonna add just a little bit to the edge of the brush, that Ritual matte brown right there, and we're gonna add that right at the lash line, just kind of on top of where I put that pink. This is gonna darken it up, but also kind of tone down that pink this almost a purpley look. I love doing this. I love mixing reds or pinks and browns together. Oh, I just realized, guys, I put that shade on my lower lash line, but I will probably cover that up with concealer. Again, it's been a while since I've done my eyes first. I know I'm gonna come back and do my lower lash line, but I'm gonna try and put just a little bit of this dark brown just with what's left on my brush down underneath my lower lash line, and then we'll come back and kind of clean up this area right here later. But this will still have some of that depth right up next to the lashes. 
Okay, so we're gonna stop there with the Tati palette. Next thing that is a definite favorite for me this month is the Sydney Grace Cream Shadow. This one is in the shade Candlelight. Actually, I have two favorites from these cream shadows this month. This shade, Candlelight, and also Stolen Kiss. I'm gonna swatch both of them for you guys. I think I swatched these in a video earlier in the month, but I just wanna show you these again. So this is the shade that we're gonna use today. This is just a true metallic. It's kind of a shell pink. It reminds me of like what Stila Kitten, I don't own that shade, but I have I am familiar with it, and this is that type of a shade. Just a very nice, soft kind of shell pink. This one does not have glitter in it, it's just a metallic. This one, Stolen Kiss, does have some glitter in it. It's a similar shade, maybe a little bit more peachy, but it has some glitter particles that do not go anywhere. So if you are looking for like something sparkly and glittery, no, I lied, this is the wrong shade. <laughs> This is a pretty one, this is Stolen Kiss. The one I actually wanted to mention is Starstruck. I get those two shades mixed up. This one is a little bit lighter and I like the sparkle particles a little bit better. So Stolen Kiss has some like bright pink sparkle particles in it, whereas Starstruck has more like silvery particles of glitter in it. Look at it, there it is right there. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So there's Candlelight, Stolen Kiss, Starstruck. Starstruck and Candlelight, I think, are my two favorites. So let's go back over to the shade Candlelight. I'm gonna put just a little bit of this on the back of my hand. These are so easy to work with. You just kind of work them into your onto your finger. You can also use a brush as well. I think they work best with a finger, and then just tap them on lightly until they dry. And they dry very quickly if you don't use a very thick layer. I think it works best if you don't use a heavy layer you don't need very much of these. Okay, there we have it. We're gonna come back and add something to the inner corner when we come back and finish off the lower lash line. Let's move on to the face next. So I do have a favorite kind of primer today. It is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. Very, very impressed with this stuff. I don't think it's quite as hydrating as the Charlotte Tilbury one, but as far as the effect that it gives on your skin, very, very similar. This gives a very very similar glow to the Charlotte Tilbury one. I just kind of like to put it on the high points of my face. Okay, I'm just gonna blend this in with my fingers. If you have dry skin, I do think it's good to wear either a hydrating primer underneath this or just an added layer of moisturizer because I don't think this is very moisturizing. Like it doesn't soften up my skin for foundation, which I sometimes like to do if I'm having really dry skin day, but I do love the really pretty glow that it gives. Hopefully you guys can see that. I use shade number two, which is a little bit dark for me if I wanna use it as like a liquid highlighter. I don't think this would probably work that way, but I do like it as a primer. For foundation, I have two favorites today. These are both foundations that I ordered from the K-Beauty or Korean Beauty video that I did earlier in the month. First off, this one right here, this is from Holika Holika, the Hardcover Glow Foundation. I don't think this is super glowy, but I really love this stuff. It's very, very long wearing. And I actually like to combine it with this other favorite, the Purito BB Cream. I do like this stuff on its own. I have two shades that I will mix together when I use just the Purito, but this one is the shade 27 and I love mixing these two together. So I have shade number four and the Holika Holika, which is way too light, and then 27 and the Purito. Usually with other brands, shade 27 seems to work for me. I've tried 27 from the Misha BB Cream, number 27 from my Mizan Snell Repair. Those are both really good shade matches for me, but this one is quite a bit too dark. So I'm gonna mix these equal parts and I'm going to apply them with a brush. I actually like this combination best with either my fingers or with a brush. One thing to note though, the Holika Holika Foundation, beautiful, beautiful packaging. I love this bottle, but I just noticed yesterday there's a little crack in the lid right here. Ugh. I hope that doesn't give me trouble over time. It's too bad, because that one was pretty expensive. I think it was like $20, a little over $20 when I bought it, which is kind of high for a K-Beauty brand, at least what I'm used to buying from K-Beauty. I like to try and find foundations that are kind of around the $10 mark if I can. I'm really surprised how much I like this, and it's grown on me. The first time I tried it, I wasn't sure about really either of these foundations, but the more I've used them, the more I really like them. Just wanna come back with a damp sponge and just run this between my brows, kind of up on my forehead, anywhere I get a little bit of settling or gathering 
or where I have fine lines just to make sure I don't have too much on. I think the brush sometimes can apply a little bit heavier than a sponge, but I love the finish and the coverage of that. Beautiful. Let's add some concealer. So I have two concealers, one that is new and one that is an old favorite that has kind of reemerged. It's a staple for me. First off, the new one is from that Korean beauty video. This is from the brand I Money. What I love so much about this, besides that it's just a good concealer formula, is this shade is like my perfect concealer shade that I may have ever tried. I'm not 100% sure on the shade of this one. I wanna say it was like shade number two or soft beige or something. I'll link it for you guys right here, but this is such a good shade for the perimeter of my skin when I have a blemish or hyperpigmentation to cover up. It has the perfect undertone for me. It's not too yellow or too pink or too peach. It's kind of like a little bit like beige in tone. I can't really explain it. It just has the perfect undertone for like what my natural skin color really is. I almost don't even need to like blend it out. I just barely tap it in and it gives me great coverage. I don't really like it under my eyes, but I like it everywhere else. Now my second favorite concealer specifically today for my under eye, but I've actually been enjoying this everywhere. It is the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye. It's been an old favorite of mine. It's a little bit of a harder concealer to use in that it takes, it takes some time to figure out how to get this to work. You cannot apply too much. If you apply too much of this concealer, it will become more cakey than any other concealer. But if you get the amounts just right, and the color just right, which I have to mix two shades to get the right color because I didn't buy the right shade the first time I bought this. So I use a mix of shades 11 and 22.5. I just mix those equal parts and then I put the tiniest amount of this just right here on this pocket right here. I try to avoid going like right here where my smile lines are. I don't have a lot to cover right there anyways. I do find if I pull too much of this across my under eye area, it can settle in those smile lines. But if I keep it right here at this pocket and over here, I know I already put concealer over here, but I'll sometimes just put some right there on the outer corner to cover up some discoloration I have there. And it gives such good coverage. It lasts forever. It does not crease as long as I don't apply too much. It just has the most insane coverage. I will blend this in about 70% of the way with my finger and then I'll go in with a sponge to blend it out the rest of the way. So I have just some extra on my fingers that I'm just running here on the outer corner. Then I'm gonna put just a tiny bit here under my nose where I have some constant redness. And let's just add a little bit more right here. Didn't quite successfully cover up my little, it's not little, it's actually a very large kind of raised spot right there. Those are always tricky to cover. So we'll add a little bit of extra there as well and then take my sponge and just lightly blend the rest of the way with the sponge. There have been a few times that I've used this concealer and did apply too much and it does crease if you apply too much. So you really have to get that balance right. But if you get it right, it's a really good concealer. Look how great that covered that under eye area. It looks pretty good. Before we add mascara, I wanna to move to brows really quickly. So this is kind of a favorite, but I discovered a flaw in this brow pencil recently. This is from that K-Beauty video. Sorry guys, there is quite a bit of stuff here from the K-Beauty video, which you might not be surprised by. So this is such a cool pencil. It is microscopic. I mean, this is half the width of even like the Precisely My Brow from Benefit. It's an ultra, ultra slim brow pencil. The only flaw with this, however, is if you have it, raised too much when you apply it, it can break pretty easily. So just be very careful that you do not let it come too high above the top of the plastic. As long as I do that, it doesn't give me trouble and you just don't wanna to press too hard because it's kind of fragile. Maybe that's more trouble than you might think it's worth, but I love how precise you can be with this pencil. I guess the other drawback with this one, even though it was affordable, I think I paid $6 for this pencil. I haven't actually looked into how many grams are in here. Actually, I think I looked, but I couldn't find it in English, so I don't know for sure. I would guess that this does not have a lot of product in it because the pencil, the actual pencil is so slim. I would have to imagine that this probably has about half the product that's something a little bit thicker, like the Benefit Precisely My Brow or the Ulta Beauty pencil would have. I don't know that for sure, but I would imagine that I'll probably run out of this pretty quick. Really good shade too. This is the shade, I think it's Oatmeal Brown. Just look how sharp you can get with that line. I just barely, barely am pressing down. And then I just kind of do some feathery lines upwards and out. 
Okay, and now we're gonna set it down with a brow pencil that I'm loving. This is from Laka Beauty. I also got this one from Yes Style. This is my perfect brow pencil. It is tinted. It's the perfect shade for me. It's a little bit dark without being too dark. They also had like a reddish brown one and a very, very dark kind of black color as well. Okay, brows are done. They look great. Let's move on to some, actually let's do the lower lash line next and add a tiny bit of this brown shade right here back to that lower lash line. We're gonna do that with this very small blending brush and just run that kind of from the outer corner towards the halfway mark, a little over the halfway mark. I don't even think I need liner today. I was gonna add a little bit of just a pencil liner like my Wet n Wild liner. Not that that's an official favorite this month. It's always favorite, but I think we'll skip it today. I do wanna add something to the inner corner just because I wanted to show you guys this and explain. So this is the Tropicolor palette from Sydney Grace. Yes, I did declutter this a couple of months ago, but I have my declutter bin that sometimes people will come pick through. I'll let my sisters or friends pick through it. But this has been sitting in there for a while and I was doing someone's makeup a couple, actually this is a while ago. This was like shortly after that declutter. It was for a high school prom and I was looking for an inner corner shade for her and I could not find the perfect shade. And then I remembered this shade inside this palette. It's just one shade that I'm keeping this for and mentioning this for today. It's this shade right here, the shade Coconut. Sadly, Sydney Grace does not make this as an individual shade. I almost want to email them and ask them if they will make this because I think it's one of the greatest inner corner shades I have ever seen. I'm gonna demonstrate for you guys. There is something about this color which is really just kind of a yellowy cream or kind of ivory with a very, very hint of a sheen to it. It has such a strong pigment to it though. It's just so like brightening. It almost... I can't even explain. Like it almost looks blue because of this reflective quality in it while still being kind of warm and golden and very white based. It's very, very, very pigmented. Like if you have a lot of discoloration on your inner corner or you have a hard time getting something to like cover and be very opaque, this is one of the most opaque shades I think I've ever seen. And it really does something special to your inner corner. So we're gonna use it today. I am gonna keep this palette after decluttering. I've taken it back from my pile, pulled it back out of the trash. Haven't I made that joke before? Like the George Costanza donut trash joke. That's what I'm kind of referencing. Anyways, I think I have made that joke before. So I just wanna show you guys how much of a pop this color gives your inner corner. Holy moly, look at that guys. That's just the tiniest bit on a pinpoint brush, but it's not super like reflective. It's just the color of it is so, it's like a warm based white. Isn't that show stopping? You like a show-stopping inner corner, that is the ultimate shade for that. Okay, we're gonna add some mascara. So my favorite mascara this month was this little $4 mascara here, also from Yes Style. I think I gave you guys an update on the other mascara that I tried out from them. Just in my last video, perhaps, this one ended up being a little bit too waterproof. Sadly, I really loved how this looked on my lashes and how well it held a curl, but it was very, very uncomfortable and kind of scratchy on my eyes and very hard to remove. So I'm not really recommending that one. However, this one is surprisingly very good. Still holds a curl really well, really nice and lengthening. It is waterproof, but it removes easily with a waterproof mascara remover. So I'm just going to throw a couple coats of this on, then I'll come back and we will finish off with the cheeks quickly because I feel like I'm talking too much. And eyes are finished. What do you guys think of this $4 mascara? Now I will admit, I probably wouldn't love it so much if it wasn't $4. That's definitely what I love the most about it, but I think it is a really good one. If you don't mind something waterproof that you have to use a makeup remover for, this one performs really well. It's not overly crunchy. It holds a curl pretty well and it definitely does not budge. That is for sure. Let's move on to the cheeks next. Next favorite is the Merit Cream Bronzer. Actually, what is this called? I think it's technically called their Bronzer Balm. Mine is in the shade Clay. I am loving this stuff. It kind of slowly grew on me. It took me a little while to figure out how I best like to apply this. So I actually like to just draw it on and then I like to blend it out with a brush, but I don't like to go into it with a brush first for some reason. That doesn't work as well. So I'll just draw it on like so and then just come in and I like to just kind of tap it out. This stuff blends so incredibly fast though. Here on this side, I won't do any editing. I'm just going to Tap it out in real time so you guys can see how quickly. There we go, see, all done. Up here I kind of will do more like swipes 
because I like to kind of swipe it and press it into my hairline just a little bit. On the side of the nose. See a little bit under the lip there. Okay, there you have it, like 20 seconds later. Okay, now the blush that I have. This is gonna surprise you guys. As much as I love the blushes that I tried out from Yes Style, the Korean Beauty blushes, the one that has impressed me the most this month that I wanna share with you today is one that I almost decluttered. This is Warm Soul from MAC. So I've been kind of back on, just for the last like two weeks, a powder blush kick. I think it's partly because I've been having some skin issues, but I have really come to love this blush. It's very subtle. I have to use a lot of it, like build up a lot into my brush. It does have a soft sheen to it, but it's a really pretty natural soft peachy color and I just have not been able to stop reaching for it. I think I've been wearing this in my last couple of videos. So I will build quite a bit up into my blush brush and then just kind of I tap it on and then I kind of like swirl it. Look how pretty that is and so so quick. Especially if you have stuff to cover on your cheeks. As much as I love a liquid or a cream blush I kind of feel like those I'll always favor those. But when you do have stuff to cover that's difficult and you find other like cream and liquid products can kind of pull coverage off or you need to maintain coverage, powder is definitely the way to go for that. I just find that powder cheek products can sometimes look a little bit makeup-y up close. Like if you're talking with someone face to face, I don't know. Like I notice it in the mirror that my cheeks look a little bit more cakey when I use a powder blush rather than having a liquid that really like melts into my skin. But I don't really stand face to face to very many people whose opinion I care that much about, so that's okay. Okay, now for highlighter. I actually don't really have an official highlighter favorite this month. The two that I've been using the most are old favorites of mine, my Revlon Skin Lights and also the Makeup Revolution, Just My Type. Sad thing to report though on my Skin Lights highlighter, the lid fell off. After a couple of years of being my favorite, it is still my favorite, but man, I hate when this happens. <laughs> Go back and use my just my type highlighter for today again not really I, I don't know it's not really an official favorite because I've kind of been jumping around with highlighters this month but these are the two that I probably use the most and I can't skip highlighter no 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 I probably should with this thing right there I probably should not put highlighter anywhere near that but come back and kind of tap that in Last up, let's move on to the lips. So I have a lip liner here. This is the LA Girl Ultimate Intense Wear Auto Liner. This one is in the shade Forever Bear. Initially when I tried out this shade about a year ago, I didn't really like the shade that much, but I've been into really, really light peachy toned nude lips lately. And this is definitely a light toned peach nude lip color. I do love these if you're looking for a long wearing lip liner from the drugstore. I think these are the most long wearing that I've found so far at the drugstore. There's been a few that are long wearing that I like. I have one from Revlon. I think even the Wet n Wild ones are pretty long wearing, but these ones are probably the best. And maybe it's because I'm just so ready for spring that I just am into like peach tones on my lips lately, like spring peach. So I just kind of blend that out a little bit, let it set for about 30 seconds. Now for the lipstick. This is an old, old, very old favorite of mine. It's from CoverGirl. I don't even think their packaging looks like this anymore. This is the CoverGirl lipstick in the shade Caramel Kiss. Such a pretty kind of pinky peach shade. So here it is on top. There's the lip liner right there. There's the shade right there. It's, I would say it leans more pink than peach, but it is a warmer pink shade and it's not too dark. I don't like the smell of Revlon lipsticks though. It's not even the smell, it's the taste. You can you kind of get that like, the scent moves into your mouth and you can kind of taste the smell of them. Does that make sense? They're kind of perfumey. Definitely not my favorite scented lip product, but I really love that color. I know it's kind of like a blanked out lip. We're gonna add a little bit of gloss to just kind of make a pop in the center. Actually, let's add a little bit of this gloss. Not an official favorite, Fenty Sweet Mouth. This is like an always favorite gloss for me. And there you have it guys. This is the completed makeup look. These are all my monthly favorites on my face along with a couple of other miscellaneous things. What do you guys think of the finished look? Let me know down below. I'd also love to know what were your favorite products this last month? What have you been really enjoying? Have you found any new products or old favorites? I would love to hear. That's gonna do it for now though. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Hope you're all doing well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.